understanding the person and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I, I, begin, I believe that through our exercise, we begin to understand that the Holy Spirit helps us to understand the mind of God. And I want to encourage us this morning that if you are here and you're not born again, you're missing a lot because you need to be born again, you know, get inculcated with God, you know, get the Holy Spirit within you so that you can be able to walk with God and understand what God is doing in your life and in the life of the people around you. Because that is the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It helps us to get to know God, to get to know the mind of God, and to get to know the things that are happening around God. And even as we look at this aspect of understanding the person of the Holy Spirit, the objective of this lesson is to help us gain a broader knowledge and understanding about the person, nature, and presence of the Holy Spirit. As we go through this lesson, we'll be able to understand who is the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, the nature of the Holy Spirit, how does he exist, where does he exist, how does he relate with us, and again, also we'll be able to understand the presence of the Holy Spirit. How can we know that the Holy Spirit is with us? And I believe that at the end of the lesson, we'll be able to know this. And again, also we'll be able to develop a desire for an inter, for a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit. A desire for a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit. And again, also, I believe we'll be able to commit to a spirit-led life. To commit to a spirit-led life. There is something that is said in our objective. To develop a desire for a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit. I want to help us know today that all of us can receive the Holy Spirit in our lives. As long as you are a believer, you are born again, you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior of your life. You have the Holy Spirit within you. But again, also you must desire to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit so that you can be able to interact also with the power of the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can also be able to use you even in a mighty way. So you'll be able to know all these things about the Holy Spirit, the person, the nature, and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we're beginning with the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. Understanding the person of the Holy Spirit has been a tough subject in our society today and even in the past. You know, some people think that the Holy Spirit is a wind. You know, some people think that the Holy Spirit is water. You know, some people think that the Holy Spirit is some power here and there. But I want, to, I want to score something here today. And I want to help us know that the Holy Spirit is not a wind. The Holy Spirit is not water. The Holy Spirit is not some power that is confused somewhere, somewhere there. But the Holy Spirit is a person. And if you look clearly at the scriptures that we'll be looking at at some point, you'll realize that the Holy Spirit is described as he. He has got some personal descriptions within him. He's described as he. He has some personal characteristics within him. In fact, Jesus, in the book of John chapter 16, when he's talking to the disciples, he's telling them that I'm going to send you a counselor. I'm going to send you a guider. This is a person. A counselor, someone who can be able to talk to you, someone who can be able to lead you and to guide you and to help you through different aspects of life. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. And just to be able to understand the whole aspect of the person of the Holy Spirit, I just want us to know that there are different aspects that helps us to know or to connect with the personal nature of the Holy Spirit. And the first aspect that helps us to connect with the personal nature of the Holy Spirit is found in the aspect of the discernment of the Holy Spirit. The discernment of the Holy Spirit. The discernment. The discernment, the discernment aspect of the Holy Spirit. The discernment aspect of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the discernment aspect of the Holy Spirit, we are bringing on board the aspect whereby we are able to know that the Holy Spirit is a spirit that knows, is a person that knows, that understands, that detects, that can be able to know things that are happening around. He has knowledge, a deeper knowledge for that matter, divine knowledge. And we are told here that he knows all things and he alone knows the mind of God. He knows all things and he alone knows and he alone knows the mind of God. 
discernment. The Holy Spirit knows. He has, under, he, has, he has what we call an understanding capacity and he has a knowledge within him. The Holy Spirit knows. He knows all things and he knows the mind of God. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11, the, the scripture that we read, that the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thought of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit knows. He knows all things and he knows particularly the mind of God. And I want to encourage us this morning that even as you are seated here this morning, and I know that there might be challenges around you, and you're wondering, does God really understand what I'm going through? Does God really understand the challenges that are there in my life? Does God really understand the challenges that are there in my business, in my home? Does God really understand what is happening in my, the lives of my children? I want to tell you that through the Holy Spirit, God is able to know everything that is happening around you. God is able to connect with the challenges that are happening around you. God is able to know everything that is happening around you. Because the Holy Spirit knows all things. He knows you by name. He knows the challenges you're going through. He knows the victories you've attained. He knows the successes that are there in your life. He knows. He knows everything. And even he knows the sin that you're about to commit. And that's why he convicts us, you know, through our conscience when we're about to commit any level of sin. That is the Holy Spirit. He's a discerning spirit. He knows. He has knowledge within him. And in fact, the Bible says... In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. One of the things I like about the Holy Spirit is that he doesn't just sit with the knowledge of us. You know, he has a very special role in our lives. You know, the Bible says that he who knows the things that are happening around us intercedes for us. In other words, the Holy Spirit understands the challenges that are around you. He understands the situations that are around you. And the role that he does is that he intercedes for you. And that's why sometimes even when you pray and you utter very simple prayers, you realize that sometimes you get that victory from God. This has been propelled and propagated by the Holy Spirit within you. We are told that he intercedes for us. He knows everything. He knows all things. He knows even the mind of God. Another aspect of the personal nature of the Holy Spirit is discretion. Discretion. And in discretion, we are told that the Holy Spirit has a will. He has a will. The Holy Spirit has a will. The Holy Spirit has a will. And what we are getting here is very clear. That the Holy Spirit is not an object. He has a will. He functions. He operates. He desires. He plans. He looks ahead. He has a will within him. You know, discretion. He has a will within him. The Holy Spirit has a will within him. And we are told here that unlike innate objects which cannot make decisions or possesses a will or desire, the Holy Spirit has a personal volition and can act according to his own will. In other words, we don't make decisions for the Holy Spirit. He makes his own decisions. And even he helps us to make decisions that glorifies God. In other words, the Holy Spirit connects us to the will of God. Because he has a will within him. And that's why we are saying that the Holy Spirit is not an object. He's not a wind. We don't push him. You know, we don't operate him. We don't, we don't control him. But he controls himself. And he helps us even to control ourselves. He has a will. That is the Holy Spirit. He has a will. And the Bible says in the book of John 3.18... That the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So it is everyone born. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a will. And the Bible also tells us in Acts 13:2 that while they are worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit say, "Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which." I have called them. That is the Holy Spirit who said that, that set apart for me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I have called them. That is the will of God within us. And the will of God within us is connected even with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a will. Another aspect of the person 
of the Holy Spirit is the deeds. The deeds of the Spirit. These are the acts, the acts of the Spirit. In other words, the activities of the Spirit. And if we read, we read very clearly, even at the book of Acts, we realize that the Holy Spirit played a major role in the life of the apostles. And we want to help you know today that the Holy Spirit, as a person, has different roles within him. He has different characteristics. He has different functions yeah, that, he, that, that, that he operates with. And we are told here that the Holy Spirit is presented as having the ability to act in and of his own. The Holy Spirit can reprove, help, glorify, and intercede. He can reprove, help, glorify, and intercede. And that's why many times when we pray, even when we're trying to search for the will of God, normally we pray to God through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit helps us even to prove things that can connect with the will of God. He helps us to know if this is the will of God, whatever we want to do, whatever decision we want to make, the Holy Spirit helps us to know whether this is the right decision. And again also, the Holy Spirit helps us to glorify God in every aspect of our lives. And again also, as I said earlier, intercedes for us because he knows everything that happens around us. And the Bible says in John 16, 13 to 14, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. That is Jesus speaking to the, uh, to the disciples, and he's telling them that the Holy Spirit will bring glory to God by taking from what is his and making it known to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit helps us to know the expectations and the desires of God in our lives. And I want to say this. That's why sometimes we wonder. We read scriptures and we're able to understand them easily and quickly. We're able to know what God is saying through scriptures. And sometimes even God is able to speak to us through scriptures. And that is the Holy Spirit speaking. He's telling us the expectations of God. He's telling us what belongs to God. He's telling us the desires of God in our lives. The Holy Spirit. And that's why before you are born again, it is very hard for you to read scriptures. And even if you read scriptures, it is very hard for you to understand it well. And even if you understand it well, it is very hard for you to apply it in your life. Because there is no superior force in you that is helping you to know that this scripture that you've read, if you apply it in your life, it can help you, it can change you, it can transform you, and it can give you a new meaning in life. That is the role of the Holy Spirit. He helps us to know the things of God. And he helps us even to bring glory to God in our lives. That is the deed of the Holy Spirit. He walks with us and he helps us to bring glory to God. The person of the Holy Spirit. And even as we look at this aspect of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit as a person can also be disappointed. The Holy Spirit as a person can also be disappointed. And we're told that the Holy Spirit can be quenched. Remember, the Holy Spirit is God. As we are going through the study on Trinity, we realize that the Holy Spirit is one person in Trinity. The person of the Holy Spirit. And since the Holy Spirit bears the divinity, and since the Holy Spirit bears the superiority of God within him, the reality is that the Holy Spirit deserves to be respected. And the Holy Spirit deserves to be obeyed. And when you do not obey the Holy Spirit, the reality is that we quench him. We disappoint him. We make him angry. We make him disappointed. And we are told that as a person, the Holy Spirit can be, can be denied opportunity to operate freely in one's life. When this happens, the Holy Spirit is grieved and therefore hindered from helping the individual in their walk with God. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the word of God, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us even through a still small voice in us, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us even through the servants of God, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us through different means, even through preaching, when the word of God is preached and you're feeling like, eh, what the preacher is saying is actually what is happening in my life. And you're not able to follow what the Holy Spirit is convicting you about. The reality is that you're quenching the Spirit and you're disappointing Him. 
So he's human. He's disappointed. He gets angry. He can be quenched. He's disappointed because he's human. And he deserves to be obeyed. Even as we relate with him, he deserves to be obeyed. And the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis 6, 3, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. God was very angry with man. After man, be, after man became disobedient. And he said that his spirit will not contend with man any longer. The Holy Spirit can be quenched. He can be disappointed. And I want to help us know today that as you talk about the Holy Spirit, you're not talking about a force that is lost somewhere else. You're not talking about a wind that is blowing somewhere. You're not talking about a water that has force. You're not talking about a power that is hidden somewhere. You're talking about a person. And this person has discernment. He has understanding. And this person has discretion. He has a will. And this person can be disappointed. And this person has deeds. And as you relate with the Holy Spirit, I want to help us know today that we relate with him as a person. We talk to him through prayers. We talk to him through the word of God. We relate with him in a better way. And I hear people referring to the Holy Spirit as it. He is not it. He is he. Because he is a person. He interacts with us. In fact, the portion of scripture that we read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, the text, there, the, the text there refers to the Holy Spirit as he. He discerns the things of God. And I want to speak to us today that if you are seated here today and you are not born again, you need to give your life to Jesus so that you can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can be able to know the things of God. You can be able to understand the challenges that are around you. You can be able to break even every bondage of stagnation in your life because the Holy Spirit with his deeds will move in your life and he will help you to make decisions that you've never made many years in your life. He'll help you even to take opportunities that you've never taken. He'll help you even to reach out to things that you've never reached out to. He'll help you to have hope that you've never had before. That is the Holy Spirit. He has deeds. He's a person. Why can't you help me tell your neighbor that the Holy Spirit is a person? That is the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. He has discernment. He understands the mind of God, understands everything. He has discretion. He has a will. He has deeds. He can be disappointed. And I want to speak to us, even as believers today. I know many a times are the times when we've disappointed the Holy Spirit in different ways. But I want to tell us this. That the Holy Spirit is a forgiving God. He does not stay in his anger. He does not live in his bitterness. But he's a forgiving God. When we come back to God and we pray for forgiveness, God forgives us and God revives us again. Even with the Holy Spirit, he connects us again with the Holy Spirit and we continue to move with him even in a better way. Because that is our God, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. And we want to look at the presence of the Holy Spirit. We want to look at the presence of the Holy Spirit. We want to look at the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell us also that the Holy Spirit abides with us. He does not live in a vacuum. He lives within us. He lives around us. He walks with us. In fact, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, the Bible says that do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? You are not alone. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. In fact, the Bible says that your body is a temple. Our bodies as believers, this is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Which means that the Holy Spirit abides with us. The presence of God walks with us. The presence of God is within us. The presence of God is around us. In other words, as a believer, when you sleep, the Holy Spirit is with you. When you wake up in the morning, he's with you. When you go to the office, he's with you. When you're driving, he's with you. Because our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit is always with us. The presence of the Holy Spirit. And we are told that Jesus promised to send the counselor. And this is found in the book of John chapter 14. He promised 
You have to send a counselor who is the Holy Spirit. He assured the disciples that he will send the Holy Spirit to be their helper, a counselor, a helper. That is the Holy Spirit. And if we look at the book of Acts, we realize that the Holy Spirit helped believers to make different decisions, different choices, and he guided them through different ways and through different channels. He is our counselor. He is our helper. And that's how the presence of the Holy Spirit operates with us. In other words, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and he operates within us and he helps us in our difficulties and he helps us in our situations. And that's why Jesus, when he was about to ascend into heaven, he promised the disciples and he told them that I will send you a counselor. I'll send you a helper. I will send you even a guide. And the Bible tells us in John 14, 16 to 17, and I will ask the Father, and he'll give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives within you and will be with you. He lives within you and will be with you. And again also Acts 1.8. But you'll receive power when the spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the hands of the earth. Jesus promised us a counselor. He promised the disciples and he promised us also a counselor and again also he promised us a help and he said that he will live within you and he will be with you. That is the Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage us as believers today that every time we find ourselves in a fix, we need to run to God through prayers because we have a Holy Spirit who is our counselor. We need to pray to him. We need to ask him to come to our rescue. Every time we find ourselves in difficult situations, we need to run to the Holy Spirit, to God, through prayers. Because the Holy Spirit, he is our helper. He comes through for us and he delivers us. That is the Holy Spirit. And the presence of the Holy Spirit was experienced in scriptures through different means. And this bring us, brings us to our point number two. Point number one, Jesus promised to send the counselor. Point number two, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. The presence of the Holy Spirit was realized at Pentecost. And the Bible says in the book of Acts 2, 1, 4, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all gathered in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And they're told that while they were gathered in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came upon believers as promised. Jesus promised believers the Holy Spirit to come as a counselor. And again also we are shown in the book of Acts chapter 2 that actually the Holy Spirit came. And you know, he came with power. He came with authority. And he came in greatness. And you're told that one of the signs that the believers realized that the Holy Spirit was with them is that they began speaking in different tongues. In other words, something different began, began happening in their lives. Something supernatural began happening in their lives. They began speaking in different tongues. The presence of the Holy Spirit. While they were waiting and gathering at the upper room, the Holy Spirit came upon them. In the form of a wind. And where they were, it was even shaking. And people were amazed. And they were speaking in different tongues. They were speaking in different tongues. The presence of the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. And I want to encourage us today that we can desire the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When we pray to God, when we ask him to give us the Holy Spirit, it begins with us desiring him in our lives. It begins with us desiring even the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We pray to him. We desire him to come and he will come and abide with us. Number three, the Holy Spirit convicts the world. The presence of the Holy Spirit convicts the world. And the that the Holy Spirit makes the world aware of sin and of righteousness. And this is a great role of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit makes the world aware of sin and of righteousness. And the Bible says in John 16, 8, when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. He convicts us of sin. 
And I believe that those who are believers can attest to this. That every time, even before you commit sin, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And he tells you, please don't lie. He tells you, please don't steal. He tells you, please don't gossip. He tells you, please don't shout. Although sometimes you're overcome by anger and you find yourself, even before the Holy Spirit finishes, please don't shout. You've already shouted. <laughs> but he convicts us of sin. That is the Holy Spirit. He convicts the world of sin. Fourthly, the Holy Spirit dwells within every believer. The Holy Spirit dwells within every believer. I told that all who have received Christ as Savior and Lord have the Holy Spirit residing within them from the point of salvation. No one can be a true believer without the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cast, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Spirit. And 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. The Holy Spirit is in every believer. As long as you are born again. In fact, even before you get saved, it's the Holy Spirit who convicts you to get saved. You know, as the preacher preaches, as this person witnesses to you, there is a voice that is speaking to you. That you need to repent your sins. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to give your life to Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And I want to speak to somebody this morning. Maybe you are seated here. And you are struggling with having a better character in your life. I want to tell you there is no better character that you can have apart from the character that comes from God. And this character is found in the Holy Spirit. This character is found in the Holy Spirit.